So WrestleMania 33, or apparently now we can't use the numbers anymore because that makes the show sound old, even though that's part of the point to build the prestige of it. Nonetheless, I digress. WrestleMania is coming up this Sunday. And I know for a while now I've been saying some things about this show, how I thought the rumored match card, which mostly ended up being the actual match card, did not particularly interest me that this path, this road to WrestleMania hasn't been very good, um, that I'm really concerned that this show is going to stink up the joint. But this is not really the time or place to talk about that either, because I've, I've talked about that. I'm not just going to try and crap on this show, because, again, when you get to WrestleMania, all other bullshit can kick rocks. All other crap can kind of go by the wayside. There is always that eternal optimism that springs eternal every year at this time with the hope, the prayer, that the WWE finds a way to deliver a good show. And at the end of the day, I'm really truly hopeful that WrestleMania 33 will surprise, that WrestleMania 33 will be better than anticipated, that WrestleMania 33 will actually live up to the billing of being an actual WrestleMania. I guess we're going to find out come Sunday night. So let me talk a little bit about the show, some of the things that do concern me about it, some of the things I'm looking forward to, and then I'll give you some predictions at the end. What the hell? Um, in terms of the actual card itself, you've got a total of eight title matches. And see, this is part of the problem when you do a brand split. You have too many damn titles. And whereas you can kind of get away with that with the brand split when Raw has a women's champion, a world champion, a mid-card champion, and then in their case, a cruiserweight champion, you go to SmackDown and you've got a world champion, a tag champion, a woman's champion, a mid-card champion. There's just too many damn belts. Way too many damn belts. On Raw and SmackDown, it's not as noticeable, but when you bring the shows together like you do here for WrestleMania and you try to shoehorn almost every single title that you have into the show, that's when it becomes very glaringly apparent that, wow, there are too many goddamn belts. Way too many. Nobody stands out. Everybody feels kind of the same. Because he's a world champion, but he's a world champion. They're tag champions, but they're tag champions. This is your woman's champion, but this is also your woman's champion. And, and it just creates a problem to me. Um, eight title matches, which means you're probably going to see several titles change hands. A couple of them, as a consequence, can't change hands because if every title changed his hands, it diminishes the impact of somebody actually becoming a new champion. It'd be interesting to see what decisions are made, what levers are pulled in terms of who's going to win a title and who's going to retain a title. Uh, as of right now, there are only two matches scheduled for the kickoff show. There are 11 matches scheduled for the main card. Now, knowing that WrestleMania is at least going to be a four-hour show, and like last year, probably longer, tipping into the category of almost midnight by the time the shit is over, in theory, 11 matches on the main card is right. And I'm actually glad, in theory, to see 11 matches on the main card. Because my problem is, is if you're going to do a four-plus-hour show, eight matches, that's not enough because that means you have to stretch out matches. Everything goes way too damn long. Again, it all kind of feels the same. Nothing really uh, stands out or is different or is unique. And as a result, it all kind of becomes a schmoz. That's really what it does. And furthermore, when you look at some of the problems of WWE in terms of card structure, flow, and time management, having those eight matches, they would still rush through certain things and then you'd have to stretch out things even longer. And you think about last year's WrestleMania, one of the major problems for a lot of people was by the time you got past the Rock and Wyatt segment where John Cena comes out, you've still got Triple H versus Roman Reigns for the title. And that match is going to go on forever. And by that point in time, people are tired and they're done. And they're saying enough is enough. This is too much. This is too much. So I do have a concern that this may be too much, but on the flip side, like I said, if structured properly, if they put the flow together well, if the appropriate matches get the appropriate time, but not every match gets way too long, 11 matches breaks up the monotony to me. And it, in theory, works better. The concern is you know you've got at least one or two segments involving somebody that's not actually going to be wrestling. Furthermore, you know you have to plan out for several long entrances. That eats up valuable time. 
Furthermore, you know that for some reason they're going to have a musical performance, you know, because they want to make it a Super Bowl type environment, but they don't really structure their show to where it really flows naturally into that what we would call piss shit concession break. It just kind of gets shoehorned somewhere in there, and as a result, they have to cut things. I do wonder if either a, sh a match is going to get dropped from this card entirely, or if another match between now and Sunday is going to get shifted to the pre-show. I really wonder that. Um, in terms of this show, it's funny because on the one hand, we talk about the WWE doesn't create new stars, and they really don't. And we talk about you know the fact that we're lacking star power. Even though it feels like that, if you look at the names on the card, there are some really big names on this card. You've still got The Undertaker. You've got Goldberg. You've got Lesnar. You've got Triple H. You've got Randy Orton. You've got John Cena. You've got Shane McMahon. You've got AJ Styles. You've got Chris Jericho. So in terms of actual star power and marquee name recognition, this show has plenty of it. And that's not even talking about potential appearances by this Hall of Famer, that Hall of Famer, this guy or that guy. I mean, you have some big names on this show. It's funny how it doesn't feel like that, if you get what I'm saying, even though they, they clearly is there. The star power is there. It's not the star power of the future. It's the star power of the past. But let alone, it is still star power. It is funny sometimes how our perspectives can be shifted and jilted and kind of um, manipulated into believing a certain thing when the fact of the matter is is that uh, this particular WrestleMania has as much star power as many of the previous WrestleManias over the past 10 or 15 years, and that is absolutely true, and I defy you to tell me any differently. Uh, one thing that's kind of aggravating to me at this point in time, even though I assume he's going to be involved in the show, is the fact that you bring in Samoa Joe, but he doesn't actually have a match scheduled for WrestleMania. At this point in time, instead of seeing Triple H versus Seth Rollins, I might have rather seen Samoa Joe versus Seth Rollins, so that way you could have further kicked the Triple H, Seth Rollins can down the bucket for post-WrestleMania and kicked that bucket down the road and gotten Samoa Joe a marquee victory here at WrestleMania. I thought that would have done a lot to help you go forward with this character in 2017. I'm sure he'll get involved in that match, but it's just not the same. Now, some of these matches, I will say, do make sense. Uh, Lesnar, Goldberg, Rollins, Triple H, Chris Jericho, Kevin Owens. You know, these are actually matches that have months worth of story, months worth of program behind them. And as often as we can look at WWE, talking about kind of just shoehorning things in and just randomly throwing crap out there, there are certain matches on this card that weren't rushed, that weren't just thrown together, that have story and logic and reason behind them. And these are not the only matches. These are just some of the marquee ones. It's just the problem of, you know, you look at Lesnar, Goldberg, you feel like you know how that might go. Rollins, Triple H, you feel like you know how that might go. Even same thing with Chris Jericho, Kevin Owens, you feel like you might know how that goes. So even though the story is potentially there for many of you, the stories might be very good, at least in some of these cases, um, it doesn't mean that you will be all that excited about it, I guess, is the way. Just because it makes sense doesn't mean it's good. Just because it could be predictable, though, doesn't mean that it's bad. I will say I don't like uh, the, what I view as some of the poor utilization of some of the bigger names. Like to me, Randy Orton wrestling a Bray Wyatt should be a middle of the summer type of jobber feud for the world title, not something that should be uh, part of the marquee of WrestleMania. I felt like there's better utilization for Randy Orton. Maybe trying to get revenge on Brock Lesnar would be just one example. Uh, John Cena and The Miz. Now, granted, The Miz has done everything that he could to make this story really go and Hats off to one of the MVPs, the true MVPs of WWE. He's done just that. But at the end of the day, there were much better utilizations for John Cena, <coughs> The Undertaker, and frankly, there were much better uses for The Miz, AJ Styles. Um, but they're going to work together, and maybe they'll make something out of it, but it just feels like you could do more with them. Shane McMahon, to me, the albatross in the room, if you wanted to have Raw and SmackDown, you you don't see a Raw versus SmackDown match, at least from what I see right now. The best utilization, nothing against AJ Styles, um, but it's Shane and AJ, in, at least as I know of right now, a regular wrestling match. AJ Styles could be used in a better way. He could be wrestling a Randy Orton. He could be wrestling The Miz. He could be wrestling somebody else. Shane McMahon should be facing off a of Triple H. That's like the obvious can't-miss WrestleMania match that those two guys could have is with each other. 
and you could tie it into the Raw versus SmackDown stuff. Just a lot of dynamics. You know, again, nothing wrong in theory with Cena and Miz facing each other, but based off of the story and what is built around, it could be so much more. Randy Orton is in a world title match at Mania, so that's not a horrible utilization of him. It just feels like he could be used against a better opponent. Shane and AJ, you know, in theory, have the type of equivalent star magnetism or power to where they should be facing each other. It just doesn't feel like it's the best utilization for them. So, I can't lie. I have significant concerns about the fact there's going to be too many matches for the WWE to effectively manage, and they're still going to botch the flow and execution of the show. Um, where they structure matches on the card is going to be critically important, and I don't have faith or confidence in them uh, to get it right. I have some fear about some of the booking decisions they may potentially make, but ultimately only time will tell. But that said, though, there are some things I'm looking forward to. Uh, some potential appearances by guys like Rock, Austin, HBK, you know, Sting, Hogan. Come on, man. Come on. Enough is enough. If the fucking... <laughs> All I'll say is this. If Donald Trump was liked by enough people to be elected president, then Hulk Hogan deserves to have a place at the table at WWE, especially when one of the McMahons is employed by the Trump administration. That's all I'm going to say about that. It would be nice to see Hogan appear in some way, even a very small capacity, at WrestleMania. Because at the end of the day, if there is no Hogan, there might not be a WrestleMania. So at the end of the day, can we put the shit aside? Because what last thing I would hate to see is something happens, and all of a sudden Hogan isn't there anymore, and you can't go back to it. And you're like, yeah, he said some stupid shit and said some really bad and dumb shit. But at the end of the day, should we bury him for life for that? Especially knowing how the WWE is? And then Sting, you look at it, to me, Rollins, Triple H, as a perfect opportunity to involve Sting and m make it a monster appearance. He should be the special referee since it's supposed to be an unsanctioned match. But even if he just comes out, he's got natural heat with both of them from a character standpoint. It would be interesting. Uh, JR uh, potentially working one of the matches. You know, my thought was, especially what's what happened with uh, Jan passing away at that tragic accident was it'd be really nice to see JR come in and be able to do a match at WrestleMania. And apparently this has been in the works for a little while and hats off to WWE for doing the right thing here because at the end of the day, you know, it's nice to have a bit of a nostalgia trip sometimes. And it's nice to hear somebody like a Jim Ross that knows what the hell they're doing is really, really good at their job. Be able to call a big time match at WrestleMania and actually have it feel like a big time match. And there's no question about it. Whatever match you throw a Jim Ross into to commentate steps up a whole different level. So I, apparently right now the rumor is that he's going to work the universal title match between Lesnar and Goldberg. And that makes sense on a variety of different levels. But at the end of the day, I feel like the match he really should call is Roman Reigns versus the Undertaker, especially if that one goes on last, especially if that one is the Undertaker's last match at WrestleMania or last match in WWE, period. Who better to call that last match than the man who called so many of Taker's great legendary matches at Mania and other shows throughout the years in Jim Ross? Um, I'm also looking forward to certain matches on this card. Uh, Austin Aries versus Neville for the Cruiserweight Championship. It's a shame it's on the fucking pre-show. Uh, but that one is one of the ones I'm actually looking forward to the most. Rollins and Triple H, even though the story has kind of petered off and it's become more about Rollins' health than the actual story between those two, my hope is, is that things get all kind of pieced together here at Mania. Uh, Brock Lesnar and Goldberg feels like a, a world title feud for men. With all the midgets and all the lames, here's two larger-than-life dudes. So even if the match stinks, and maybe there's a part of me that's looking forward to because of that, you know... My hope is, is that still delivers. And then Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker. Is this match going to main event? Is this Taker's last match? Is the WWE really going to pull the trigger and have Roman Reigns win this goddamn match? I'm really curious to see what ends up happening. So some predictions here. Braun Strowman wins the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. They better not have that fucking Uber driver do it. That should be the first person that's fucking eliminated, that lame piece of crap. Send him off to SmackDown so that way I don't have to fucking watch it. I believe Austin Aries will become the new Cruiserweight Champion. Baron Corbin will be may become the new Intercontinental Champion. Um, the company seems to be a little bit behind him, even though, frankly, who gives a fuck? Why am I even talking about it? They couldn't even bother on the go-home edition of SmackDown to do anything with Corbin and Ambrose. Who gives a shit? You would assume Kevin Owens is going to be the new United States Champion, uh, but again, time will tell. 
Uh, I think the G-Spots, Enzo and Cass, will become your new Raw Tag Team Champions. Um, since you're in Orlando, Naomi winning the SmackDown Women's Championship seems to be the logical thing to do. We know the WWE likes to have people lose in their hometowns. Furthermore, why did we strip the belt off of her? Just so that way she could come back before Mania any fucking ways. Just all types of stupid. Uh, but hopefully WWE does the right thing. Even though they went and screwed the pooch too early by not having her win it at Mania. Maybe they'll actually have her win it at Mania, but um, we'll see. Uh, I, I think Bailey retains, maybe? Ah, fuck, I don't know. Who cares? I think Nikki Bella is going to pin Maurice. Uh, you would assume Seth Rollins is going to win. You'd assume AJ Styles is going to win. I think Bray Wyatt's going to retain. I think Bray Wyatt has to retain. If you put him in this spot at WrestleMania, you can't really have him go in there with the championship and lose another match at WrestleMania. Because if you do, then why the fuck did you have him win the belt to begin with? You know, it's something to be said about being a transitional dude, but he doesn't need to be a transitional dude. If you're actually behind him a little bit, he needs a marquee victory over somebody like Orton at WrestleMania, period. I think everybody assumes, rightfully so, that Brock Lesnar is going to become the new Universal Champion. It's all about where it happens on the card, uh, when it happens, how it happens, and why. As to whether or not that really works and really goes over well. And then when we get to the match that ultimately has my interest the most, I really wonder... I mean, if they've already had The Undertaker's streak ended, why wouldn't they have Roman Reigns beat The Undertaker? As far as the thing of, well, they're going to have to follow it up with a heel turn, ding-dong, dumb dicks. He's booed by the majority of the audience any fucking ways. He already is a heel. Furthermore, the WWE lives in this alternate universe reality of bullshit, sitting there suggesting to themselves that, hey, it doesn't matter because he gets a reaction, and that's all we care about. The WWE is going to probably piss you off tremendously in what could potentially be Taker's last match on Sunday. Obviously, I'm hoping for something different, but if that's what they go with, that's what they go with. People are going to have to come to grips with that, and WWE may potentially have to come to grips with the blowback from that. If anything else, it will be an interesting WrestleMania come Sunday night. Good? Bad? We're going to find out.